Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. In this video, we are gonna be working on making a double oak leaf curtain tie back. So in my house, I actually have a large three panel window. It's kind of like a dormer window, it bumps out. And therefore I have three sets of curtains that ends up having, well, technically four sets of curtains that need to take and happen. Well. We've already done one curtain tie back, which is basically just one half of these, uh, but there is some double that, you know, there's a little bit difference as you can see with the double here, double curtain tie back. Certainly you could make this as well to just hold back one curtain on the left or right hand side. That's completely a possibility. But anyways, where I'm at, uh, the place that I need to attach this at, it did not look good to take and have uh, the size wise of the other curtain tie backs on the left and the right hand side of the window. So the center pieces, they need something to complement the outer edges. So that's why we're going with a double oak leaf curtain tie back. So for those of you that have not watched the other video yet, great way of doing it. I'll leave a link right up here. And I will also put a link down in the description that you guys can check out after this video is over. If you wanna see how to just make a single oak leaf tie back. I'm gonna set this off the side of the camera here. Excuse me for a second. Before we jump in uh, to forging here, I'll give you guys some dimensions here. This is a piece of quarter inch by one inch flat mild steel and it's eight inches long. So that's 25 mil by six mil and eight inches is, uh, let's see here. What's that gonna be? 250 mil long, no, wrong, incorrect. I'm screwing this up already, you see how that works? You see how that works? It's 200 mil long. <laughs> Anyways, that's for you guys across the pond. Hope you guys enjoyed that little bit. So I've marked in from the ends exactly dead center, uh, so four inches or so, and then I've come off that by an inch and a quarter or so to each side of that center punch mark, and you'll see that in the video. Uh, so now we are going to take and draw down between centers by we are going to segregate the material on the front and the back on the both ends of the leaf, and then we are going to forge out the space in between. So without further ado, Let's get to the forge and get this started. Definitely had that piece a little on the hotter side than what it needed to be for this marking stage, but that's okay. We will get that set up. We're gonna drive down about half the material thickness of the parent bar stock. And we're gonna take and put down our second shoulder as well. because we're here and we can. I'm just straighten this out on the anvil with just a few hammer blows to get it set up more proper. So you guys can see how that looks right there. Now we can get rid of this tool altogether. It is not needed. And we're ready for the next step. The next step, we're gonna round off those corners on both sides. So we have this piece nice and spicy. We're gonna do with a really steep hammer angle with kind of back face hammer blows. We're gonna knock a 45 degree bevel on the flat. Same on the other side, on the flat. Just keep working that together, almost like we're trying to forge a really blunt point at the tip. You should end up with something that's looking like so. And then we're gonna round off the rest of the material into that rounded tip now. Don't worry if you start getting any sort of little carps mouthing or anything on the very end of this piece because that's going to get dressed up at a later date. We did that to the one side, just like so. Uh, we're gonna pull out two separate lobes. That's why you don't have to worry about the carps mouth too much on that end. So don't spend too much time trying to make it pretty right now at this stage. We're just trying to get in all the details. We're flipping this over, get it hot again.
Okie doke, so there we go. Now that those ends are dressed properly, now we can go and start drawing down between centers. So now we're gonna take and draw down between centers and uh, get this thing drawn out. Then we'll start the leaf work. So we wanna get this thing good and hot. We're gonna start on the far side of the anvil. Now onto the near side. Again, I like to walk into my, I like to walk into my shoulders. You have less of a chance of double biting onto them. If you walk up to your shoulder when you're working at the edge of the anvil. Now you should end up with a little something that looks like that. And you can get as fancy with this as you like. This can be a really nice door pull or drawer pull at this stage. Just something to keep in mind. Maybe make a, maybe I'll make a future video like that. That's a really pleasing shape. So maybe think about that for a drawer pull or something. Uh, but sadly enough, we're gonna just continue to draw this down. Now that that mass is there, we can come to the horn and drive that mass out to catch it up to the rest of the work. Now we're gonna put the apex of the peak on the horn and we're gonna draw that material out, walking onto our shoulder again. We've gotta draw a good bit of this material out, working both to the front, both feeding and pulling the material. We're going to straighten up at the anvil. Get them shoulders reestablished there. And I'm just basically straightening this piece back up at this point. Because I want to see how far I've progressed across the anvil. And it's easier if at each stage during this process, if you're trying to get uniformity and regularity, you want to straighten things back up a little bit before you go to each different heat. So there we go. So you should end up with something like this. I'm not quite as wide as my anvil face, which is six inches. So I still need to take and draw. This is 150 mil across or six inches. So I still need to draw this out until the distance between these shoulders is six inches or 150 mil there. So we will get this hot again. And I'll be right back with you as soon as that's done. Now's the perfect time to take our stem that we've made to go all the way across the anvil. We're gonna take it from that square cross section to octagonal. Now this is going to stretch it even further, and that's okay. We need that extra length in there. So we're going to take this to octagonal, and then we're going to round this up by taking off all the facets that we've just created, both the square and the octagonal facets. Don't worry if this rotates a little bit, doesn't really matter. So once we've accomplished that to a degree, we've made this look somewhat of an intelligent attempt. Now we're going to now we're going to end up going to the anvil's horn here. We developed a little bit of a twist, so let's get that. I can't get it out at this heat. That's too much force there applied. Now we're going to go ahead and use the horn to give this the stem look. It's important that you be very intentional with texture. Raw mist hammer blows is not good surface texture or finish work. Um, it'll highlight real bad 
in a finished piece, just really dumb hammer blows that were misplaced all over the place. That is not texture. Texturing is a pattern. So there is a perceivable intent that you're doing to, to the piece, to the iron, to the steel, to give it character. Not just, well, I, you know, I left it lumpy and bumpy, and that's the texture. We want to take and be intentional about the texture. Good iron work is always well thought out. It's never a mistake. First things first, being intentional. I'm going to make sure that's straight. And now we're going to use an intentional texturing. We're going to work back. I'm doing about a quarter turn to one eighth turn each time on the horn to provide lumps to it in a proper, repeatable pattern. It looks a little on the random side, but it is not. It gives a very specific stem look to the piece. Now you can straighten this back up on the anvil, but be careful doing it too far. Straightening that out on the anvil now that you have the texture in there for the stem. Go ahead, get this cleaned up. just so this way we can have it cleaned up so you guys can see the texture a little bit better as we go. This brings us to our leaf portion. Like an oak leaf's pass, I'm going to be using the guillotine tool and we will be, we will be fullering in on both sides here. Better grab out Mr. Thing. Right here on this end, we're gonna be fullering in real close within about 3 8 to roughly a half an inch from the end, or 9.5 mil to 12.5 mil from the end, and then we're going to kind of just progressively let them get a little bit bigger. Again, this is more of an eyeball type thing as leaves are meant to be natural and flowing. If you get too mechanical with your forging past this stage right here, it will look very uh, machine made and not handmade. And we want it to take and have that flowing field like a sculpture, like you've sculpted this piece uh, into being. So uh, just keep that in mind as you progress along. So now we're gonna go ahead and pinch in that area and go right on down with the guillotine tool. So there's the preform for that. Now we will use a ball tool, a ball fuller, or a ball peen hammer using a soft face hammer, and we're gonna drive out these lobes. This, was, this will draw this material out into our oak leaf form. So we're gonna do that. I'm not going to show this process on the other end. Once you know how to do it on this side, it's wash, rinse, repeat on the other. But we'll go ahead and do this uh, end just for sake of the video. Make sure you got a good secure grip. I'm gonna hold the piece myself in the top, between my legs here on the anvil. And we're gonna start out at the very tip, driving our lobes out and forward. Now it's not gonna look like you get too much travel right now, but you'll get more travel out of this piece once we go to using the cross peen to draw the piece out. You want to hit just off center with the radius 
of the ball on the ball peen hammer you're using or the ball fuller. And I'll show you the result here. So you can see how that's starting to divide the material up and spreading those lobes out. That is exactly what we're wanting. We'll go ahead and straighten that up a little bit. Or you can leave it naturally curved. That's whichever one you want. I, however, want this a little more on the straight side. So now that we've got all of our lobes preformed, we're gonna take the cross of our cross beam hammer. We're gonna start in the middle and draw out to the edges. I'm just pulling straight out. All we're trying to do is get some width into this leaf. Draw straight out to your lobe area. Just like so. Now I'm going to take one heat out here. I'm going to get one heat on this. And I'm going to planish this material out now. But there you go. We've gotten our width into our leaf. We'll take one heat to planish this. It's going to be a fairly light heat that we take. Took in a light heat. Looks a little hotter on the camera than what it is. This is a oh lighter orange color. And all we're doing is using the flat of our hammer to take out any of that cross pattern that we had for texturing and get it where we're starting to create more of that leaf texture later on. So right there I was hammering a little bit to each side of center. What that does is that gives a very shallow bump in the center. So it thins out the edges a little bit more than what's in the center. And that allows for the structure, the understructures of this leaf uh, the undertones under the texture to really pop. It'll give this central area here a lot more volume as where it'll give the edges of the leaf more grace. So that's what we want. So well, let's take one more little light heat here. This one we're going to come up to a nice orange color. A nice bright orange color. And we're going to switch out cross peens. I'm going to switch this cross peen that has a nice broad flat surface to this cross peen that just happens to have like a 3 8 inch radius fuller to it. Reason for this being, this is too heavy of a hammer. I'd rather have a 3 8 inch radius fuller and be doing this, uh, but it's just easy to take and use this hammer as it's within reach. And I can use that right there to create the texture I'm looking for if I don't burn the leaf up first. Got a little bit of scorching on there. Not bad, caught it just in time. We're gonna straighten it up here. Okay, and now we're gonna come from the top with some overlapping hammer blows, or every other hammer blow, if you will. And we're gonna create the texture. Be very careful to stay out off of the center line of the piece. You do not want these you do not want your cross peen to take and cross the center line of your leaf. If it crosses the center line of your leaf, it's gonna give you a bunch of like X's right in the center. And that's not gonna be very attractive. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get used to doing this. 
by just hand-eye coordination, but it can be done, just take your time. So we'll set this back on again. I'll reduce some of the airflow going to this fire pot so it doesn't heat so quickly. And end up burning the piece, scale the piece to no end. And then we're gonna come down the opposite side. Now also, you'll notice I'm not like swinging this from the end of the hammer because I don't need that much force. I'm holding it clear up here and just doing these like really light taps uh, just to get the impression. So uh, you can choke up on the hammer for this because you're not trying to take and move material. So that's okay. We let the, we let the heat do the work. Again, I'm just staying off that center ridge. It's very important that you do so in the final product. Okay. And there you have it. So I'm going to lightly straighten this just to take it down to the anvil. We don't want to forge it into the surface of the anvil because then it'll take out all of our texture and leave us bright little shiny flat spots we don't want. So now we'll clean this up. And hopefully this will give you guys a little idea of the texture there. So that's it for the oak leaf. Now I'll be right back with you after I do the other side. And I really like doing this here Ladies and gents, let me grab this a little bit better from an angle. But I like showing where it came from. You know, that's really interesting that all this came from just a square bar, just a, you know, roughly a half hour in, and it's already had that much material change. This is one of the biggest things I love about blacksmithing is that process. So we're gonna flip this around. I'll put this back in the fire, I'll get this in done, and then I'll be right back with you and we'll wrap this into our curtain, tie back. So now that we've got this other side completely textured, we're going to turn textured side down and we're gonna hammer right in the center of the leaf, just two little flat areas, basically that we can put a punch on. This doesn't have to be super perfect in the center. It just has to be close. And then we're gonna drive our punch down to the surface, but that's where we're gonna stop it. We're not going to punch back through as we're gonna drill that out later. Just like so. Get this straightened up. Again, we do not want to take, we do not want to take and punch all the way through. We're just creating recesses for our screw heads to actually sit into. And these were made approximately an inch or 25 mil apart. So now comes the fun stuff. I have to let this cool for just a minute and then I can drill these holes in this piece while it's still in this flat orientation. So I will be right back with you after I get the holes drilled here, and then we will go ahead and continue to wrap this on around. So now we're gonna go ahead and start shaping this leaf. We're gonna start by curling some of the leaf edges up, just at different random spots to kind of give it more of a ruffle to it, give this leaf some more dimension. And then we're gonna go ahead and bend it around the horn of the anvil. Once we've got the edges kind of ruffled a bit, and we're gonna use the wooden mallet to take and do that. I find a wooden mallet really what does work best for this type of operation, because you can really shape it around the horn without worrying about taking out your detail. If you don't do that, and you decide to use a metal hammer, 
you need to hit to the off side of the anvil, not directly on top. Because again, we're trying to form, not forge at this point. We're gonna get that heated up again, and we're gonna just keep bringing that on around. The next piece now, however, we're gonna have to make sure it kind of comes around it opposite a little bit, and then we're gonna pry the pieces to where we need them to be to have that right amount of arc and curvature that we're looking for. Get that nice and hot up a little closer to, to the pole. Again, we want to kind of have that nice curve. Also, the reason why we need to bend these is because we can't block our actual holes, right, that we're going to be screwing into. So it's good to go ahead and do that. We don't want to have a bunch of kinks in this leaf either. I see a few forming. So I'm going to make sure that it's a nice smooth curve all the way throughout is what I'm looking for. And we want to be able to double it back on itself like that in order for it to properly hold the curtains. So I'll get that getting hot one more time here. And we will refine that shape. So I'm working closer to the hole that we drilled after punching. Okay, gonna keep that punched hole nice and square, but we wanna be able to shape this leaf right on around and uh, give it a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna start giving a little a few pops right here, start giving it some kind of curve. So it's not curving straight in line with the piece, trying to find a good angle that you guys can see this. We don't want to curve just straight in line with the piece. Now, whichever way we decide this leaf needs to curve, when this one comes around, it needs to go the opposite way. So that looks pretty good there. I'm gonna go ahead and get that kind of cooled off with that cool just a little bit as it goes here. I really like that curvature, it looks pretty well. So now we're gonna go ahead and flip it around and we will heat up the other side. Again, just giving the leaf some curl in some different areas using the sharp of the horn, of the anvil. Not every end needs to be curved, but again, it gives it a little more dimension, I like starting it that way. And then I like working this piece down around the horn of the anvil. There we go. We're gonna start that curve going the right way. Start getting it to twist the opposite direction. We'll get this good and hot one more time here. I'm letting this run straight through because it really doesn't take long for this thin material to heat up. I've also switched to a pair of wolf jaw tongs, that way I can get around. You can do this very similar, similar with a uh, pair of bolt jaw tongs. I don't have any just right at hand, so I just switched over to the wolf jaws. That's easy enough to do. So now we're going to just keep encouraging that bend and twist where we need it to be. Right on around we go until they start meeting in the middle. Now we're going to get this to twist a little bit once these are both exactly like we're wanting them to be. Nice and tight, the arc's about right. It's like so. Now we're going to give these just a bit of a twist. So this is going to get pulled that way, this is going to get pulled this way out of the fire. I'm just going to do that with a pair of tongs simply. So we'll heat the piece up. I'm going to heat up the end we've been working on so far. And when we get the pair of tongs I was using previously, if you've got scrolling tongs, you can use those, flat tongs, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna get that end heated up, the bend that we've created, and we're going to offset those bends. So here we go. It's nice and warm. And we're gonna give it a bit of a twist. Now the key here is we do want to be able to keep this flat, the screw hole flat. So always be thinking that those screw holes need to remain flat. So I'm giving it its twist. 
I'm going to just take it right back on around a little more. Make sure that screw hole stays flat. And now it's coming around. So now I'm going to do that to the opposite side as well. Give it just a little more twist. And keep bringing it on around. So flip this around real quick. Grab the opposite side and do it again. We'll just get that end in. We're just trying to heat up that bend, the really tight bend of the stem. Because that's where it needs to do the majority of its twisting. As you can see, it doesn't take long in the coal forge to end up getting that up to temp to be able to bend it. Okay, so we're good and hot now. I'm gonna just give it a little bit of a push. That'll be good. Bend it right on around. Just wanting to match that radius nicely. Taking it right on around. Hopefully eliminate as many flat spots as we can into the piece and this is just really just the fiddly bit of it this is part of the process I have to get that open a little bit more but that'll allow me to get my drill in there and get those into get some screws in there so there you have it ladies and gentlemen now this for the finish that I will most likely go for this will just be a wire wheeled and a highlighted surface finish. If you want more information on how I finish my ironwork, I'll put a link to that video as well down in the description uh, where I've done one of these already and you guys can watch that. And, uh, but without further ado, I wanna just thank you for watching. If you like to support video content like this and keep these tutorials here on the great world wide web, a uh, great way of you doing that is just checking out our website, uh, blacksmithpdfs.com. Woo! about told you my regular website, which is ChristCenterIronworks.com. You can check that out as well. <laughs> Maybe I should edit that out. Huh? Yes? No? Okay. We'll just get on with it. Anyways, if you want to support uh, what we do here and all the tomfoolery and stuff, uh, just check out our website. Uh, blacksmithpds.com and consider purchasing a power hammer plan and or an ebook and that really goes a long ways to uh, producing these videos for you all again as always thank you so much for watching god bless you and we will catch you on the next one